Okay, guys. Craft fur. Craft fur minnow. Real easy. Real simple. Really cool. Get some markers. Have a good time. Thread. Standard 6 aught, 140 denier, something to that effect. Hook. Small circle hook. Uh, J hook. Something with a real short shank. As you can see, that's a that's a pretty short shank. I think this is like a size uh, 8, something to that effect, J hook. So here we go. Start the thread right behind the eye. We're going to go straight to the back of the hook shank right there, about even with the barb ish, somewhere right behind it. Craft fur. We're going to take a nice tuft. Oh. Something to the effect of that. I'm going to trim it off. I'm going to hold it right here. And then I'm going to flick it just like this, just to kind of get all that little short, scraggly stuff out of there. And as you can see, it's going everywhere. By the way, you're welcome, Bob. Um, get all that out of there. Trim it off nice and straight. Lay it in, one time over the top, cinch it, give it a few turns just to get it all nice and tight and held in there. Cover this up, we're not worried about this, we're going to cover all that up here in just a second. Come back, tail looks good. Okay, here's where it gets even easier. We're going to take this, pull out some thread, make a dubbing loop. Go around it once. That locks your dubbing loop nice and tight together. Now, just bring your thread back to the front of the hook, right at the eye. I use a shepherd's hook. I'm old school. It's just what I use. It's what I've always used. It works for me. Use whatever works for you. Now we're just going to get about enough craft fur to fill that dubbing loop. We want it to be not horribly full, but to look nice. Because we're going to cover the rest of the hook shank. You want one about two inches worth of the craft fur, quarter inch wide or so, something to that effect. Trim some out. Trim some more out. Okay. Now I'll just come in here, get my dubbing loop open. Set the craft fur in there. This is not a very scientific part of the process because we just kind of put some in and fill until we like the way it looks. We don't have to pick out all that under fur stuff this time because this is what helps create bulk for the body of the minnow. So, right there, right there need a little bit more just so I can get all the way back to the eye of that hook. Probably a little much, but we'll figure it out. Oops. Knock that stuff right out of the loop. There we go. Let's stick her back in. There we go. Slide all that stuff around, get her back up there, looks like that. Now, here's a trick. Pinch your thread right there at the right where the craft first starts, and then spin your dubbing loop twister and spin it a bunch. Get it really twisted up nicely, kind of kinked up, bound up, way too overspun. I can't remember where I saw this trick, but I found it somewhere on the internet one time, and I thought, wow, that's pretty handy. And it is. But you just twist this thread up till it's real nice, and see how it's kind of kinked up there? Okay, now we're just going to put a fair amount of tension on it and let go. There you go. See how that spun out like that? And it's not hardly tangled in there at all. There's a little bit of tangle because this stuff's so fine. But then all you got to do is just kind of pick it out a little bit. I use my dubbing loop twister, or not my dubbing loop twister, my whip finisher, just the hook end of my whip finisher. Just gently pick it out a little bit. Okay, now we're just going to wrap this up the hook shank like we would a rabbit strip or something to that effect, pulling it back as we go. Nice and easy. 
Real simple. Ouch. Hooks are sharp. Get up here, close to the eye. Right there. Get right there. Now, go once, twice around your bobbin thread. Pick it up. A few turns around there. That locks in that dubbing loop nice and tight. Whip finish tool. Nice head. Take that thread off. And then again, just take your hook on your whip finisher, pick it all out. It gets all fuzzy and funky looking. Then you can just kind of push it back gently like that. And you get a nice little bait fish profile, just like that. Now we take markers. All right, just cut that off. I forgot my Okay, now we're going to color it. This is the easy part, guys. This is just a dark green marker, Sharpie, Prismacolor, whatever you've got, whatever you can find. We'll take, we're going to stripe the back. I tied this in green thread because I want to make a little baby bass pattern. So we'll just stripe the back, just like that. Okay, I'll take, I'll flip it over, do the exact same thing to the other side. Just stripe the back of it. Real simple. Get it colored decent. There we go. Put that on. Now take a brown one. This is a dark brown. Take the fine end and I stripe it right here, just a tiny little bit underneath the green. Go to the other side, do the exact same thing, a tiny little bit underneath the green. We'll take some of these eyes here. I can get them out of the bag. And some Zapagap gel. Boy, that's an old bottle of Zapagap gel. Take this eye. Pop it off of here, go to the back of it, get a little bit of gel coming out here, put me a little bead of gel on the back of that eye, just like that, figure out where I want it on my hook, on my fly, then just set her down on there, just like that, stick it to my finger. We use the gel because it doesn't run so bad, so it sticks a little better to the fly and not so much to your finger. Push it on, and then you can take and just kind of gently stroke everything back. Get it all together. You can take a little bit of red and color the throat right here. You can give it a little trim. This one needs a tiny bit of a trim, but not much of one. But that's it, basically. You do the same thing on the other side, but that's it.